Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. Welcome back to the shop. Today's video is a mixed bag of things that I'd like to pass along. And the first one being uh, a little oops or a, a surprise that I got from a trusted product recently this week. And just thought I'd pass it along so what happened to me won't happen to you. Uh, there is a saying in the machine shop community, in the job shop community, if you've got time to lean, you've got time to clean. So that means... Don't stand around waiting for your CNC to finish the cycle. Grab a broom and sweep the floor. You know, you're not getting paid to stand there and look good. That being said, I decided to clean some of my ER collets this week with CRC Evapo Rust. Now, this is a product that I use regularly and I trust it, and it has performed well right up until this moment. Well, I took a plastic chute tote full of ER collets, 16s and 32s, and put them in there, filled it up with a big bowl rust. Gotta love it. Move along. Well, it says on the it says on the container for light rust 30 minutes, for heavier rust 12 to 24 hours. Well, 12 to 24 hours, that's a long time, right? Since this is a very neutral product and it's supposed to be safe to use, I decided, well, I'm going to put my collets in there. I'm going to put half of my collets in there, thankfully only half, and let it soak overnight. Well, let's take a look at what this CRC product did to my collets in about 13 hours. These collets look like they have been through a barn fire. I mean, they are blue and they actually have discoloration on them. That looks like they were subject to extreme heat. You can see how it goes gold and blue. Now, that's what they look like currently. This is what they're supposed to look like. This is what they look like before they went in with some superficial rust on the face and around the nose because I use a water-based coolant. Now, I called CRC and I said, hey guys, what's up? Well, in an email string, CRC replied that it said... Uh, a reaction called carbon surfacing, depending on how much carbon is in the material that you put in the evapor rust initially, will determine whether or not this happens. So if you're going to soak something that has a high carbon content, something that's ground, polished, hardened steel, be very careful that this does not happen to you uh, in a continued email string with customer service at CRC. They replied, well, simply polish them back to the original luster. And you got to just scratch your head and say, if I want to feel like polishing these pieces, I'd have polished the rust off and save myself a whole lot of aggravation. Anyway, that's part number one. So uh, watch out for that if you're going to soak anything that's hardened ground steel, that's cosmetic and needs to look good after the process. Soak them short term. There's no warning on the bottle about this condition possibly happening. And although I was told that it does, uh, there is a warning on their website. I went through their website and I couldn't find it. So... Guys from CRC, if you're watching this, and I'll bet you are, post a link in the comment line below, and I'll pin it so that everybody can see that it actually does exist. All right, let's move out to the shop, show you a way to not smash your fingers and ruin your day. All right, the next thing I'd like to share with you is the way that I take my chuck on and off. This is only an 8-inch chuck on this machine, but this is, a, you know, this is heavier than a bag of cement, I can promise you. And this is not exactly like dirt down here. This is a hardened steel. This is heavy. When this hits this with this in between, well, it's going to leave a mark. So at the very least, at the very least, put a piece of wood in between your chuck and your machine ways. If you lose control of this, and it does happen sometimes when you unloosen the cams or whatever device holds the chuck to the spindle nose because it's a taper lock on there as it walks off the taper, it's going to move forward, it's going to move down, gravity's going to take over, and hopefully there's no ouches going on. Well, thin piece of wood's just not quite good enough, so naturally I had to go overboard. Got a big timber, went off on it with a bandsaw, and I have a nest for my chuck that fits like a glove. When the cams are released in the back, the weight of the chuck just simply sags a little bit onto this, and I can slide it out like a drawer. Works very well. It's still very awkward to handle these because the studs in the back are short and this is bulky and sometimes six jaws they can have sharp edges. So, if you don't have a bandsaw, 
and you do have a two by four, put together something like this. It does not have to match the bottom of the chuck to this surface right here. Slide it under there, slide these two pieces in like a door wedge until it comes tangent to the outside, nail them down, you got it going on. There is still room under this chuck, but this chuck will sit nicely on that slider. That is problem number one solved. The chuck is not going to slide or migrate down towards the bedways. Next is how do you handle the chuck with the weight and make it easier to handle and put away. It'll give me 30 seconds to unloosen my cams here. No stress whatsoever. I am not concerned about this chuck falling off at all because I know it's trapped right here. Still sitting on the taper. I'm going to give it a shock to release it. Alright. Look at that. Doesn't get a whole lot easier than that, guys. It's safe. It's easy. The board itself is not going to go forward or backwards on the lathe. The chuck is not going to roll because it's chocked. The chuck is chocked. Say that three times fast. Anyway, something I forgot to do before this, but it's going to be relative. Let's spin this for a second until I find the key. Okay. Do this before you take the chuck off. Take a piece of stock pipe, whatever you can find that will support the weight of your chuck, and lock it in the jaws. I use about a 16 inch piece of half inch aluminum. Leave about six inches hanging out the front, six inches hanging out the back. Now I have a handle on the front and rear of my chuck that I can grab like handlebars and just simply lift this thing comfortably every time. You don't have to worry about holding on to a tiny little stud. Just grab and go. Same thing with the install. Back up. Wait for your index marks. Slide it in. Lock it down. Done. Just don't forget to lock this down before you take that out. That is a very handy thing to have in your arsenal. Keep it on top of your chuck when you're not using it. Just invert it and sit it on top like a hat. These are not usually symmetrical about center line of the machine. The ways are not usually perfectly centered. So it might not work if you rotate it. Mark the front, chamfer the front, radius the front. Put a big F on it for front. And away you go. All right, one more little product warning before I sign off. And we'll call this one a day. Next product in the crosshairs, Anchor Lube, right here. I got a lot of this stuff uh, provided to me by directly from Anchor Lube, and I picked some up at Stan Zinkowski's Bar Z, Shade On HKW YouTube channel. Check him out, and thank you very much, guys. This stuff works very well. I use it for tapping primarily. Every once in a while, I'll use it for drilling. And here's the warning about this stuff, although this is really good. Uh, if this drips on your machine and you don't clean it up, for any extended period of time, maybe even overnight. When you do clean it up the following day, there is going to be a black spot on your machine where this stuff sat. I don't know why it does what it does, but it will leave you a little dark reminder of, oops, you should have had some paper towels on hand and clean it up. So it's not necessarily something wrong with the product. It might be something wrong with the process that you uh, clean your shop with. So grab that paper towel, and if this stuff slings on your machine, clean it off. Because I have a couple of black spots on my lathe from it dripping out when I was tapping something. And, oh well, now I can make a video and tell you not to let that happen to you. Good stuff. Good for tapping. I like it. Clean it up as you use it. No black spots. Once again, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, wherever you are in the world, I hope you're well, happy, and safe. All of the above. Stop by the store. Check out the goods. Grab a t-shirt. Grab some swag. Hit that subscribe button, like, thumbs up, do it. I am Joel Pye here at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas, and I'm out.